so I sort of, you know, I, I looked around and, and I saw that the Cambridge cycling campaign seems to be where all the people who are interested in transport tend to, to, to ag you know, ag aggregate, um, you know, not, not just for cycling, but for transport in general. And um, Robin sort of heard my sort of plea for help, if you like, and um, he persuaded the cycling campaign uh, to back this idea and to sort of set it in motion. So what do we do? We're designing a new transport infrastructure in Greater Cambridge. Uh, we're sort of trying to bring in some new ideas. And we have, uh, we, we came up with our you know, six points for what we should be aiming to achieve. The first one is to simply give people more travel options so they don't have to drive. Because many people feel that they don't have another option. We know that Predictable journey times is the most important thing to people. It's not the time that it takes to, to, to make the journey, it's predictability. And if you have to allow an extra 10, 20, 30 minutes for a journey, because sometimes it will take you that long, then it's as if the journey always takes that long. So making journey times predictable is, is a high priority. Enable buses to run faster, that's an obvious, um, uh, you know, obviously it fits with that in giving, giving people more travel options. If they see the bus is no faster than driving, then it actually doesn't make, you know, being stuck in a bus in a, in a traffic jam is, is less pleasant than being stuck in your own car, listening to your own music, in your own climate controlled space. And making multimodal journeys easier, um, this is about the idea that making it easier so that you can say cycle to catch a bus to get into the city centre to then walk. Or maybe you've got to make two bus journeys to get to where you where you want to go. Let's make sure that the way that you make these journeys is easy and safe and secure, so that, that you know you can secure your bike at a bus stop in a village, get the bus into the in, in, into the into the central Cambridge, and then get another bus onto Addenbrooke. Um, it's obvious, and another disincentive using public transport is that the pricing is not transparent. You have to pay multiple fares to, to, to go to a destination that's not you know, on, your, on, a, on, a, on a single bus route. Um, and uh, make, you know, paying for parking something that you can reserve a space and, uh, you know, and turn up and, and make, the, make, make, make it so you can pay for parking at park and ride sites and, and uh, the bus fare all in one combined uh, transaction. And then finally, um, make cycling and walking safer and more enjoyable. So that's what we, we set out to achieve. So we, we've come up with a 10 point plan. And the first part of it is probably the most um, uh, complex. It's what we've called smart traffic management. It's basically where you coordinate the traffic lights within the city to control the, vehicle, the rate at which vehicles come into the city. So you um, put controls on the outside, on all the roads coming in from the outside. So the congestion, if you experience it at all, it will be at the edges of the city. Once you're through into the city, the roads will flow freely. Um, and the, the, importantly, this means that the buses can flow freely and they don't need segregated, dedicated bus lanes. Um, this means the, bus, the buses will be faster and the journey times will be more predictable. Okay, so um, this is a, just a, a, a rough initial impression of where the controllers would be. So as you see, it clearly form a ring around the city. The, the slightly complicated one is on Mavingly Road, on the um, A1300, whatever it is. Well, it's not where the waterway is, but anyway. Uh, because you actually need, you sort of need to, because you've got A428 traffic coming in, and then you've also got traffic coming off the motorway. This will combine with building more park and ride sites, so that you don't have to drive around the city to get to a park and ride site, that all of the major routes into the city will pass a park and ride site. And these two combine, so you'll see with you'll notice that the positioning of the, the park and ride sites is tied in with the positioning of the, the controls. So the idea is that where, we, where you've got a solid blue line, that's where you will have a bypass lane or a bus lane that takes you from the park and ride past any queuing traffic 
to the front, and then from that point on, the road will be uh, will, will, will be congestion free. And so the, the two have to be uh, done work together. You can't you can't really do one without the other, and also you have to build all of the the traffic management at the same time. You can't just do it on one road at a time because if you do, people will just simply move around to the next one. <laughs> to take the to, to make public transport attractive to people who don't live on major bus routes, we need to improve the bus services from outside of the city. At the moment, you can get a bus that meanders around the back streets and you, you know, you, 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 it, will, it will take twice as long as to drive, and that's just, that's just mad. So the, the way that we see to solve this is, is and this is, it's done in other cities too, is that you have um, transport hubs around the city, you know, in villages, in Camborne, um, and, on the, on the, and the park and ride sites themselves serve as, 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 as transport hubs. And you can either cycle to these, or you can get a, a local connecting bus, um, and then once you're there, you then have an express bus that then takes you into the city centre, or takes you to Adam Brooks, or takes you to another hub where you can get to where, where it is you want to go. And that ties in with, with, with this rationalising bus services. So um, these connect the hubs, and then you have local services to bring you into the hubs and take you out. So you'll have a, express buses running, let's say, every... Uh, you know, maybe every five, ten minutes. Uh, they won't run to a timetable because they'll, they'll be running that frequently. And they take you to a hub, and then there will be buses that will then take you the last mile or two of your, your journey. Or you get on your bicycle and you cycle that. To make buses easy to use, we need to simplify ticketing. As I talked about before, that means using smart cards. Now, you, there is, you know, can bus, a stagecoach does have a smart ticketing, but it only works on their own buses, and it's only for season tickets. We need something, you know, if you go to London, you just use your contactless card, you get on the bus, you get on the tube, it's simple. There's no time waiting or queuing, and, uh, you know, the system there, you don't have to decide in advance how many journeys you're going to do, because the, 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 the daily fare is capped. That sort of thing just makes public transport easy to use. You don't have to plan, you just get on and use it. Um, and that combines with, you know, if anyone's used the transport plan for, for London, you know, it's great. You can, you can name a, a, a street or, a, or an attraction that you're going to, and it, will, and it will give you a choice of different ways you can do it, different bus routes, using the tube, walking, cycling. You know, and that's what we need. You, know, you, you want to be able to plan any trip, you know, just know, okay, I go to this bus stop, in five minutes there'll be a bus and it'll take you to here, and then uh, you know, there'll be an on onward connection to, to where I want to get to. We also need to make um, modifications to the road network. Um, now, probably the, the, the first of these is probably the most controversial. I know one person in the, this room who um, objects in principle to, the, to this concept. It's, it, it, it's, it's, uh, and there are organisations that have objected for a long time to this. But actually, we see building an east and southern orbital link as really the only way of pushing some of the traffic out of the city in a way that allows us to be more radical in what we do in, in the city. Mm -hmm. So enabling us to, um, to, to close roads to through traffic within the city um, and uh, give, give more space, uh, dedicate more space to cycling. Um, the Girton Interchange, which is that junction between the A428, the M11 and the A14, um, if anyone has ever driven through there, it's a, you know, we all know it's a nightmare junction. And it is going to be remodeled but it's not going to add any new connectivity. It's simply going to make existing connections somewhat safer and uh, a bit quicker. Um, there, there's, a, there's a strong need to connect the A428 to the M11, um, which, which you know, that the connection isn't there now. And uh, we, we would argue that doing that will actually remove quite a lot of traffic that currently either goes down Mangue Rise to get on the motorway there, or um, quite typically goes down through the villages through the Cobb Toft and Combaton and so on to get to the Barton Junction instead. So putting these sorts of connections in means that people who, who need to drive and probably not into the city, they're going to, a, to, to somewhere on the other side of the city, uh, they don't need to come into the city. There, there's, there's, there's a route that they can take on, on the trunk road 
Um, and there are, there are lots of other junctions that can be improved to, um, you know, and, and primarily to make the centre of the city something that is, that is principally for public transport, for cycling and walking. And then everywhere outside is optimised uh, for getting uh, a free flow of, tra of traffic. And, and we've just sort of sketched um, the route that this orbital route would go. So it connects in the new junction on the A14. So you, you, we, we lose the Fenbit junction, which should never have been built in the first place. And we have just a continuous link into a route that goes, uh, that weaves down, it goes around uh, Airport Way across Tevishan. Um, there's, there's already quite good roads down to Fulborn Road, but then the awkward bit is from Fulborn Road to the M11. And one might want to use the Android Access Road, and that just wasn't designed in such a way that, 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 that can be used as a, as a major route. And this takes traffic out of Trumpington, out of Queen Leaders, and um, you know, pushes it out onto a, a, a dedicated trunk road. Um, and here's uh, just an impression of, of having got an interchange. Some of this is, is planned already, so those two roundabouts are part of the, the current proposal for what, what's going to be built. What's really missing is this, that we've drawn in is this link to the 848. And this, if you sort of work it out, you can see that you can now make any connection via those two roundabouts. Um, so that really means that people who are going past Cambridge or trying to connect them onto those roads, just that's going to be the most obvious route to take. Um, the enhanced access to rail, rail services, I mean, the, these, are, these are all on the cards. Um, these are not, you know, we can't claim that these are our ideas. But they all serve to provide more transport options, and particularly on, on uh, you know, Andrews Hospital, there's, there's masses of traffic that is going to, to Andrews. So having a station there um, will, and, and the new biomedical campus, you know, it makes huge, it perfect sense to have one there. And having a station in Fullbourne, um, uh, sort of, we sort of, sort of it's mapped out, you can sort of see that there's a fairly obvious basis to have a sort of this block Cambridge North Station, Central Station, Andrews, and then one, one over between Sheridan and Fullbourne. And there will also be one at Soho, which uh, has a railway line but not a station. Um, and that would actually enable a, a sort of a circular local um, uh, train service that would, would come through all more up um, to Ely and then back around through Soho. Um, this was touched on before about uh, uh, delivery services. This is you know, a common complaint when people sort of say, well, we're going to stop cars coming to the city centre, people to say, well, what happens if I want to pick up some, you know, a flat screen TV? How often do you do that? But, you know, you do, people do come in and they don't want to be loaded down with shopping and then get on a bus. So for, for, for heavy goods, let's get a way of getting them delivered in the way that, that John Lewis does mm -hmm. to their depot on Trumpington Park on the right side. Let's have a scheme that works for the whole of the city so that you could go to a local shop, look at the goods, have it delivered to the park and right side where you're parked and it'll be there within, you know, within two hours. Um, you know, and, and have it delivered to a, a local you know, hub somewhere within the city uh, for, for people in the city to, to collect things. Um, and, and, and if we're, if we're starting to close streets within the city, then, that that's, you know, that then we can say, well, certain operators can be given you know, privileged access through those, providing that they provide a certain level of service you know, for instance, using electric vehicles. Um, and then the last of our 10 points, uh, rationalising car parks. This is essentially reducing free parking options for, for commuters, um, and that, that may mean expanding the residence parking scheme um, to most of the, most of the city. Um, but to, to do that, you actually really need to uh, restrict parking for an hour in, in a day. So you could just say, you know, there's no parking here between 10 and 11, or between 11 and 12. Um, so it's actually relatively easy to, to enforce. Um, and I think that the, the multi-storey car parks, I mean, you, you, you know, we've all witnessed the huge queues of traffic to get to get into a multi-storey car park. You know, they are traffic magnets. Mm -hmm. um, so it really makes no sense uh, to, to, to keep those. And actually, there's ways that they can be repurposed. Uh, there's for cycle parking um, and then cycle hire. And if you go go up, go up onto the roof of the um, Grand Arcade car park, it would make an absolutely fantastic sculpt, you know, gar sculptured garden and, and cafe. Uh, because the views from there are, are fabulous. 
Um, and, and you know, phasing out some of the on, on street parking makes sense. I mean, we, we talked about um, a workplace parking levy um, as being, uh, you know, something else that's being considered. So, you know, we we feel that our mission, as it's as we've stated it, is broad enough to appeal to stakeholders in the city and South Cambridgeshire. There is always the danger that we can do something that's very city focused, that's going to make the lives of people in the city easier. Um, but people in South Cambridgeshire are beyond pay the price, and that's not acceptable. Or on the other hand, we can make it so that people in South Cambridgeshire can all drive into the city centre, and that makes them happy, but makes people in the city very unhappy. So we've got to get a balance right, and that's what we're trying to do. Um, and we're looking for a long-term solution. We really don't want to see more fixes, uh, piecemeal, disjointed fixes, um, which unfortunately, because so much of the money that's spent on infrastructure comes from developers, it gets spent in a very geographically constrained area, and that's why you get very poor connectivity between, um, say, cycleways, where you know it's a brilliant bit of cycleway, and then it just ends. And we really need to have a holistic approach. Um, and then um, this, you know, this tranche of money really gives us the opportunity to do something where we're looking across the whole city. Um, we believe it's deliverable. It's cost effective. It's more cost effective than, say, building a, a dedicated new busway through Westfields, um, and certainly has a lower environmental impact than other, than other proposals. Um, tunneling is not uh, not an essential part of this, although conceivably um, people might decide that the tunneling part of that um, orbital route is necessary. Um, but I think if, we, if the options are costed and people can make the choice, uh, whether it's worth the addition or ten million or whatever it would be. Um, not building bus lanes um, you know, on Manningley Road or any other arterial roads, or even re-designating bus lanes on Milton Road to cycleways um, means that we, you know, we can have really attractive, safe uh, cycleways that, that the people who are a little nervous about cycling are, are happy to use. And you know, I, it, I noticed in the uh, Atkins report for the, for the Manningley Road, it talks about how the, the bus lane um, uh, well, it talks about how the cycling infrastructure would be m more or less maintained as it is, and that cyclists could use the busway if they want, or the bus lane road if they want. Um, and I, you know, that that just is not acceptable. Um, you know, you you have to be pretty confident to to cycle on a road at all. But uh, having great buses thundering past you and stopping in front of you and pulling out past them, it, that's not that's not good. So uh, we're you know. It's early days for us. Um, we need a lot more help, um, both developing the vision and importantly consulting with people because we really want to talk to people throughout the region and really, really learn what people's concerns and interests are, um, you know, and explain to them what the, the options are being considered. Um, and you know, being able, uh, we, we need to we need to uh, do a lot of work in actually making things. Uh, drawing out the various schemes so that people can visualise them because it's difficult to, to do it just from a verbal explanation. So we have a website now, um, so make a note of it please. And um, um, you know, we look forward to a, you know, a, a debate that could go on for many years. <laughs>